Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to 212 Kids. Man, I'm so glad that you're here with us because this summer at 212 Kids, we're having an amazing time finding out how to make waves. That's right, and I'm not talking about just splashing around in a pool. We're discovering this, that what you do today can change the world around you. I mean, listen, isn't it cool how we talked about last week that when you and I put our faith in Jesus Christ, that we have the gift of the Holy Spirit living inside of us, and that's how you and I can make waves. That's how we can change the world around us, through the power of the Holy Spirit, and we can choose to live God's way and think and do God-type things like this, like love and peace and patience. And we can show others what God is like with how we act and treat them every day. For example, in following Jesus, other people will be able to see all the joy that we have in our lives. And I don't know about you, but I love to have joy. And you're going to see that joy is not just about being happy, but it's so much more than this because we're going to talk about how you can have joy in any situation. But before we get to that, let's spend some time in praise and worship. Let's be joyful together, telling God how much we love him. Are you ready? Let's go. This one's called Wave Walker. Here we go. One, two, a little bit faster. Mm. Uh. Uh. Yeah. Uh, here we go. One, two, three, four. Ow! joy. Well, like I said, this summer we're talking about how we can make 
waves. And last week, we talked about how we can make waves by showing love. We can choose to love others because we know how much God loves us. Well, today, we're going to see how we can make waves of joy. And we're going to look at an amazing story from the book of Acts. And the book of Acts in your Bible is called Acts because it's the acts of the apostles, the ones that served Jesus. And in other words, we can read about all the things that they did right after Jesus died and then rose again and then went back to heaven. Before he did, though, he appeared to many people to prove that he'd actually come back to life. But as we've talked about before, Jesus said, hey guys, I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to send you the comforter. And on the day that's called Pentecost, Jesus promised that the Holy Spirit would come. And he did. They received the gift of the Holy Spirit inside them. And the Holy Spirit gave them boldness and courage and joy to work for Jesus and do all that he told them to do. Well, because they had the Holy Spirit inside them, the believers in Jesus began to tell everyone about him. They shared the good news of Jesus with all those around them. And by this point, thousands of people had started following Jesus. And here in the book of Acts, we can read how the followers of Jesus shared everything in their lives. They shared their food and the things they owned. They prayed together. They praised and worshiped God together. They even healed sick people through the power of the Holy Spirit. And you know what? I have a graphic to show you something that represents what was going on at that time. That's right, a heart. Because they had that love that we talked about last week and they show, showed it by sharing everything. That's how they lived it out. But not everyone was happy about the believers and all the good things that they were doing together. There were some religious leaders who still did not believe that Jesus was the Son of God. Well, one day, Peter, one of Jesus' disciples, who we've talked about before, actually healed a man through the power of the Holy Spirit while he and his buddy John were going to the church. A crowd of people started to gather, and Peter and John started telling them about Jesus because of the boldness of the Holy Spirit. Well, the religious leaders did not like that one bit. And they were so angry that people were stopping to listen to them about Jesus that they decided to arrest them. And they got Peter and John and threw them in prison. Well, poor Peter and John had to spend a night in jail. And all the religious leaders were trying to stop them from sharing the name of Jesus. But... Peter and John told them that they had to speak the name of Jesus. They had to talk about all the things they'd seen and heard. Well, the leaders warned Peter and John again, but then they ended up letting them go. Well, the believers and Peter and John, they went right back to continue to share all about Jesus. They healed more people that were sick and they continued to live with joy. They told more and more people about Jesus. And as you can guess, this did not make those religious leaders happy. In fact, the religious leaders, uh, they were jealous of all the good things that God was doing. And this time, they rounded up all the disciples and put them in jail. Ugh, not again. The religious leaders were really trying to squash their joy, weren't they? But something amazing happened. Here's what it says in Acts chapter 5. It says, During the night, an angel of the Lord came. He opened the doors of the jail and brought the apostles out. Go stand in the temple courtyard, the angel said. Tell the people all about this new life. Did you hear that? God sent an angel to rescue the apostles out of jail. Well, sure enough, the apostles went out and started to teach everyone about Jesus. Well, the religious leaders sent some officers to get the apostles from prison, but they weren't there. Someone had seen the apostles in the courtyard teaching about Jesus. So the captain of the guard and the officers went to get the apostles and bring them before the religious leaders. Well, the high priest questioned the apostles and he said this, didn't we give you clear orders not to teach in Jesus' name? But you fill Jerusalem with your teaching. You want to make us guilty of this man's death. 
talking about Jesus. Well, listen to what Peter and the other apostles replied. They said this, we must obey God instead of people. You had Jesus killed by nailing him to a cross, but the God of our people raised Jesus from the dead. Now Jesus is the prince and savior. God has proved this by giving Jesus a place of honor with him. He did it to turn Israel away from their sins and forgive them. And we are telling people about all these things. And so is the Holy Spirit. God has given the Spirit to those who obey Him. Guys, that is the definition of perfect joy. You see, Peter and the other apostles were filled with joy because of God's Spirit. That's why they were able to speak and teach about Jesus with such boldness, even in front of the religious leaders. Well, one of the religious leaders named Gamaliel, he ordered the disciples to leave. He wanted to talk to the other leaders and he told them this. He said to be careful with the way you treat the apostles because if their plans and actions only come from people, they will fail. But if their plans come from God, you won't be able to stop these men. You'll only find yourself fighting against God. You see, he knew the truth and the religious leaders decided to follow what he said. They brought all the disciples in and they said this, they had them whipped and beaten and told them again not to speak in the name of Jesus. After that, they set them free. Well, the apostles had been thrown in jail. They'd been treated badly, but still they chose to respond with joy. They continued to share the good news of Jesus more and more and more and more people believed in Jesus. You see, joy is not about being happy. It's more than that. Joy is something that comes from our relationship with Jesus. And it's something that can fill us when things are good and when things are tough. You see, God's Spirit fills us with joy, just like God's Spirit filled the believers way back then. So guys, let's do this. Let's choose joy no matter what is going on. Now, I know that's easier said than done, so let's do this. Let's stop and pray and ask God to help us to have the joy that he gave the apostles way back in the Bible. God, we thank you for this amazing story from your word, this amazing true story that showed that, God, the disciples and the apostles had more than just happiness. Happiness is something that we only have when things are going well. But in the middle of being thrown in jail, in the middle of being whipped and beaten, God, they still continue to share the love of Jesus with joy because of the Holy Spirit inside them. God, I pray that you'll help us in the middle of our tough circumstances to still have the joy that you gave them. We thank you for this, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear God, when the Mortons asked me to babysit Gil later this week, first I was going to tell them no. But I remembered Mrs. Morton was taking care of her mom, and they were going through a tough time. And well, there wasn't much I could say but yes. The problem is, every time I go over there, Gil just wants to play video games. And his mom and dad don't want him to have that much screen time. It's like a battle. He doesn't even talk to me. He doesn't even look at me. And if I turn it off, he's mad and goes to his room and pouts. But this time, I was ready with an idea. Gil loves this video game where the animals have squirt guns, so I packed up a couple of real squirt guns of my own. This time, when he started to play, I did too. He loved it. We played all over the house. I don't think I'd ever heard him laugh like that before. He totally forgot about the video game. And the best part was when his dad got home. We left him a note and a couple of squirt guns. I think he loved the new game too. And he just kept thanking me for staying with Gil. God, thanks for letting my mind have some ideas to help people. Please let me keep going like this. Your friend, Kiara.
Guys, I don't know about you, but I find it amazing that the apostles chose to have joy in the middle of some really difficult situations. I mean, they were thrown in prison just for telling people about Jesus. I wonder if I could have been as joyful in that situation. In some ways, you know what? I'm not so sure. But then again, the apostles had a lot to be joyful about, right? They knew that Jesus had died on the cross and had come to be their savior. They had God's spirit filling their hearts with love and courage, and their joy came from one thing, their relationship with God. Joy was the evidence of what God's spirit was doing in their lives. So you know what? I can be joyful in the middle of tough situations because you know what? I have God's spirit living inside of me, and so do you. So we can do this. We can choose joy no matter what is going on. I mean, I know, like I said, it's easier said than done sometimes, you know, because sometimes you might not feel joyful when you have a really tough homework assignment and you need to get it done. Or if you need to make things right with a friend or a brother or sister that you got in a fight with, you know, you may not feel very joyful when something has gone wrong at your home and, and you're just not sure what to do. Just remember this, your joy doesn't come from what, the way that things are going around you. Your joy comes from knowing how much God loves you. And you can find joy when you choose to trust God no matter what. And believe it or not, we can actually change the world around us by choosing joy. People will notice that we live with joy even in the middle of not so joyful situations. Guys, they're going to want to know, where does that joy come from? And that is a cool way that you and I can make waves and make change in the world around us by showing God's joy in the middle of this tough world. God, I'm so glad that you're giving us that joy and I'm so glad that we're gonna have a great week. Hey, I want you guys to know that that's it for this week, but I love you. I can't wait till next week because we're gonna find out more about what God's spirit does for us. Until then, we'll see you next time here at 212 Kids. Hey guys, be sure to click here to watch another episode of 212 Kids and click here to subscribe so you don't miss any of our upcoming episodes.